look at all that. Wonderful. I got you easy. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one. Your neck does not like to bend to the right. Your neck, oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Tell me, tell me about yourself. I know we got a couple MRIs here. Tell me your story. What's going on? Uh, I used to have headaches as a kid, um, and it sort of just developed into this like severe neck problem. Um, about three years ago is when it got really bad. Okay. And um, I just like it was like ten out of ten pain all the way through my head. And, okay. And about three, two, two to three years ago, the pain just started traveling all the way down my back, and it was like my body is like, "Oh, I'm giving up on you now." <laughs> okay. And it's kind of just locked in this like bad pattern here. So. Mostly in your neck. Do you feel symptoms down in your arms? It's a little bit. Not. It doesn't really tingle all the way. I, it did a little bit for a short period of time, but as more shoulder, said, more shoulder and elbow. Yeah. It tingled down in my hand for a short period of time. Gotcha. Yeah, it should be the, one second, two, three, four, five. So the, so they took, who took these MRIs? What, what sort of led to the MRIs getting taken? Uh, I complained to my doctor. Uh -huh. They sent me to the orthopedic uh -huh. surgeon and I did physical therapy. When that didn't work, then they took pictures of it. Okay, so when they, 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 and you said they didn't go over your MRIs, or they did? What did they say? They basically just said that you could have this and not have pain. Okay, that was the gist of it. That was it. That's all, all they right. said to you? Pretty much. They were like standing in the way of treating me. <laughs> okay, well, let me, did they show you the images? Did you actually see these? Yes. Okay, all right, so this is, this is come over here, Carl, I got it right here. So this is your neck, you're looking to our left, so yeah. your jaw would be... There's your jaw and your mouth over here on our left side. I'm zooming in a little bit. So these are the little spinuses, these little gray things, these little bumps that you feel in the back of your neck. Those are the spinuses of the vertebrae. What we're looking at here are the, these are the vertebral bodies, and then these are, in between there are sandwiched these discs that are made of cartilage, made of water. And so the cartilage, specifically here at the C, one, two, three, four, the C5 disc is gonna hit the C6 nerve. The C6 nerve goes to your thumb and index finger. And so pressure, here is going to give you, like you were saying earlier, tingling or some sensation down to your arm. Now, at the same time when the disc is injured, very likely the joints and the tissue above here is going to be inflamed along with what we can see on the MRI, which is that there's disc injury. There's hypermobility here that's allowed this to be injured. Essentially, you're bending too much here, and that's what's allowed this to be injured, and you're not bending up here because these are not aging. Right, so part of your neck has remained young, and part of your neck is aging at a faster rate. So essentially you're 35, but your lower neck is 65. This is older than you are, and you're hitting the nerves in your lower neck, and we wanna move the stress off of your lower neck, bring it back to where your neck is supposed to be moving, which is up at the top. Headaches are ultimately, one of the primary causes are inflammation in your upper neck. So because this is stiff, which allows this to be overstressed, this is all congested and clogged. There's nerves up here that get irritated. That's what then causes the headaches. So we'll go through up your upper neck, you know, get that moving properly for you. Headaches wouldn't be something typically, unless there's something more serious that you're gonna be able to visualize on an MRI. You're saying it's more soft tissue, inflammation, tension, muscular, joint. Um, what we can see in there is the more expensive things called discs. All back surgery ultimately happens because these discs wear out. They're non sensitive, non-regenerative tissue that as it ages, we, we can't unage it, we can't turn back the clock. So the goal with even treatment of your neck is to slow the aging of that one disc so that you catch up to it. The path that you're on, by the time you're 50, it's gonna be 100. And then, and I can't even, I'm, I'm dropping things because I have weakness in my hand. And so we need to stop this train because it's gonna derail. The lower back tells a similar story. So the white is water. So I'm going to start here at the top. So this is lumbar five. There's five lumbar vertebrae. These are the discs here. And these all look brand new, healthy. They're all nice and filled with water. You know, the, uh, there's no disc material going past the back of the vertebrae. And then you get to the last guy here, and it's like a piece of bacon, right? Mm -hmm. It's all 
cooked. <laughs> this is ma- it, it actually reminds me of bacon. It's like <laughs> cartilage. It's it's like you've you've been inflaming this disc for so long. You've been cooking it that it's actually getting harder and it's getting smaller. So the largest disc in your spine is supposed to be that guy. It's supposed to be bigger than that. It's supposed to get bigger as you go down. So it's what. You've lost 20, 30% of the height of that disc relative to, that makes sense? And now there is material starting to come out. See that little? That's material coming out the back side. So like a jelly donut, you're squeezing the front, and then it all starts to herniate posteriorly towards the spinal cord. So your, your nervous system is right here. This is your spinal cord. This is cerebral spinal fluid. That your it nourishes your spinal cord and it's going down the we call the spinal canal. So there, there's another word we use called retrolisthesis. So the back of the vertebrae should all be lined up. When I let's go back up here to the normal areas. So that the corner of that vertebrae perfectly lines up with the corner. So you see all that? Mm-hmm. They all line up. They're all supposed to be perfectly like like uh, Legos, <laughs> you know, stacked. So let's let's move down here. Lines up. Lines up. So the back of that vertebrae doesn't line up. It's a it's a minimal, about I call it grade one or maybe almost grade one retrolisthesis. So it's a very minor. There's that's what's actually damaging the disc. There's actually a sliding force being placed on that disc. Can you see that? If I if I run a line up the back of that vertebrae, I get to about there. And so there's a ligament in here that's been torn that allowed that to slide. Mm-hmm. And that, so discs are like that rubber eraser that you had when you were a kid, <laughs> right? The rubber eraser, I could throw it in a parking lot and drive over it, it doesn't get damaged, right? But I could take that rubber eraser and twist it in my hands and rip it in half. So it can handle thousands of pounds of compressive force, but it can't handle 15 pounds of rotational twisting force. The discs can handle compressive forces, they can't handle shearing forces, sliding forces. And that's what's allowed this is where you've had a whiplash or a fall something you know a fall into your butt that's torn that ligament and that allowed that sliding force to be placed on there the symptoms of this would be and you may not have symptoms of this yet they would be leg symptoms they would be symptoms of ed my leg feels heavy could be burning could be neuritis i have some burning yeah how long has that been going on years a couple of years so what i'm trying to say is that when this starts to hit something it's like the enamel on your teeth. It protects the tooth, right? And the enamel is non-sensitive. The disc actually has no feeling. It prevents pressure on the structures that do have feeling. So as that disc doesn't do its job, as it gets worn out, the structures that have feeling start to get pressured, the nerves that go down your leg. We're going to loosen up further the parts of your back that are young, and they've remained young because you must not be accessing them. Meaning that when you bend, this must not be bending, hence why it's not aging. And if I had the MRI report on this, I would suspect they would say unremarkable in reference to the young parts of your back. It isn't unremarkable that some of your spine hasn't aged. It's actually quite remarkable, and that will give you the explanation for why this is aging too quickly, because this is not aging at all. We're doing about an inch forward, your head posture. The lack of curve in your neck creates tension, right? So the neck curve allows the weight to be evenly distributed. So you've lost our curve, and then the head is forward about an inch. For every inch the head goes forward, the muscles have to double their workload. So if the head weighs about 10 pounds, if it goes forward one inch, now your muscles feel like they're holding a 20 pound head. So they're working harder, building up more lactic acid. Like if I have you holding a bowling ball out in front of you, it's harder than if it's close to your body. So our posture determines the mechanical load and stress on the muscles, the discs, the joints. So our, your alignment hasn't been correct, and then with that, of course, you're going to have tension headaches, cervicogenic headaches, we call them. You keep, keep looking this way. I'm going to have you just look uh, to your left for me. Okay. Any pain when you do that? No. Go ahead and look to the right. And a couple of things are going on. When you even, so you know, notice your shoulders moving. Watch me. Watch yeah. me. Watch, mm-hmm. watch, watch, watch me. <laughs> what, you're supposed to just watch. See, that was just my neck. Now watch. I can, you can recruit. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Your upper back to assist in cervical range of motion. That's what you're doing. So. Well, it looks good. I can turn my neck. Yeah, but you're using your upper back to, to participate. It's okay. Any pain? Any no, no pain when you turn? No. Okay. Look up for me. I'm going to just, just gently look up at the ceiling. Pain when you look up? No. Okay. All right, so your range of motion isn't too bad. You could have part of your neck bending too much, 
and another part of your neck not bending at all. And so your total range of motion looks normal, but it's actually not happening over all the segments too much as we call it hypermobile. One area is bending too much and another area is hypo. And I'll feel that in a second. You got an injury on the right side that's, due, that's made your head tilt left, and then you've dropped. Does that make sense? This is what you're, you know, there's an injury on this right side of your neck that we're going to feel in a second. Okay. Oh, feel. Gotcha. Left hip's high, wow. Left hip's out of alignment. Okay, let it all go. I got you. Deep breath in. Head back. Exhale. Nothing. Okay, deep breath in. I got you. Head back. Exhale. Yeah. Okay, see that? Get the idea? Yeah. You are way too frozen. Yes, I, I, I got, feel that. <laughs> I got about maybe four of the 12 vertebrae in there, about four moved. Okay. So we don't have our whole team working. I'm gonna explain this adjustment and, under, and help so when you're out of town and somebody's doing this to you, the goal of this is to not adjust the injured disc. Mm -hmm. You have an injured vertebrae and the injured vertebrae is right here. Okay. So you're gonna see me do a couple things. We're gonna not uh, touch that. We're gonna loosen the joint below called your sacroiliac joint. And we're also gonna loosen the joints above we're going to, your lumbar should have a curve in it. So when I'm adjusting you, we want to help encourage that curve to be there. And I'm going to show you how there can be some differences in how this adjustment happens. Some chiropractors are going to want to bring your knee up real high. And you see it when this knee comes up, this flattens. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is we want to have some curve in your back. So come a little closer. And see how I let that curve sway down here? I don't bring the knee up real high. We keep that arched in the lower back. And I'm not going to touch your lower back. We want to work on here and here. Take a deep breath in for me. Exhale for me. Okay, good. Breathe in one more. Exhale. Other side for me. Good. Mm -hmm. Exhale. Uh -huh. Exhale. Exhale. All right, good. Hey, something. I got you. I got you, bud. Yeah, right side, right, Alice. Everything's blown out to the right here. Has anybody picked on this knot? Are they should kind of no. no, no, okay. <laughs> it, it is not minor. It is not small. It is not insignificant. This is a large knot. I'm not a dramatic chiropractor, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to be a little dramatic when it comes to the size of this. I mean, it is not insignificant and it needs to be addressed. Your neck does not like to bend to the right. Your neck, oh yeah, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know, we have a car that is on a level surface and I let go of the steering wheel and the car is pulling to the left, <laughs> right? Um, it's not driving and tracking straight and so you're gonna wear out one side of your neck faster because the alignment is incorrect. If your alignment of your car's tires is incorrect, your tires will wear out unevenly and you're not told to call up Michelin and say you got sold a diseased tire, <laughs> right? The, manufacturing of the tire all of the rubber was the same age yet the alignment is wrong and certain you know stresses are being placed at a higher level on certain areas your alignment is incorrect and then with that headaches are just an effect of having the wrong alignment you okay buddy okay yeah all right I'm going too hard please but we're, that is a significant knot on the right side of your neck You okay? Mm -hmm. All right, I know, I feel it. Oh, man. It might even, you know, give you a headache a little bit as I'm, as I'm stirring this up and cleaning this out. Sometimes the nerves in here that overlap with the headache nerves are being stimulated, so you got to work all that out of there. I am a very greedy chiropractor. <laughs> I have never been accused of going too easy on someone. Um, but if I'm going too easy, let me know. But usually head back off, take a break. Alright, all right, take a break. Alright, good, good, good. Yeah, <laughs> it's like two different, a story of two different necks. You all smooth it is over here? Hmm. Now this is going to be the abuse side, specifically 
the, this right here, the left lower will be where you essentially abuse because you're in right avoidance, you'll be in left abuse, left compensation. Yeah, I can't even hold the phone on my left side. Correct. Right here starts hurting right. in five minutes. Sure, yeah. You're, you're, in, you're abusing this now. Yeah. So we're into the, it's, you're old enough that this has been here long enough that now we have the compensatory pain. Mm -hmm. We have the original pain and now we have the compensatory one. Well, essentially the spinal cord houses the nerves that shut down digestion. We call that the sympathetic system, right? Your fight or flight system. The other system is called your parasympathetic, which is your wine and dine, your rest and digest. So when there's spinal inflammation, these nerves shut down digestion. They'd be the cause of what we call gastric paresis, right? So the, the paralyzation of your digestive tracts. And so as we, we would say, stimulate and clean and depressurize the sympathetic nerves, that allows the parasympathetic to do its function and stimulate digestion. That's the story. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. We never really even learned about the spine at all. Right. Uh, throughout school, it was like, yeah. Only now I'm learning. I'm like, well, why didn't we know about this? <laughs> I asked my wife that kind of question when I was dating her. I was like, even like, because I I didn't. I grew up with the chiropractor's father. So right, right. I I didn't. I grew up way everybody. I'm like, didn't you guys like care about your back? And what'd you say, Carl? And you were like, totally as long as you didn't break it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was totally unaware of anything except that you don't want to like get paralyzed. Basically. Right. Exactly. Yeah. As long as you don't break it, but there was no like understanding of discs. I know. I'm sorry. Nobody showed you that. How did it get so big? Um, yeah. I use the soft tissue work to help coerce <laughs> the spine looser so I can get a better adjustment, so we can get a better stretch. It's stretching that changes your alignment, but the stretching is ineffective if your spine's a two by four. <laughs> So we have to make your spine supple and willing and malleable enough to accept the stretching. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would just get on QVC and sell stretches, <laughs> right? Why have an office? You have to be. You have to prep people for stretching. It's been here long enough that you've got it like wrapped in a ball. <laughs> it has to, it's like been sequestered and it's almost like it's almost disconnected from the circulation. So we have to like re-hook it up to <laughs> some, some, some power supply. <laughs> Eventually, no marks come out. The marks are the evidence of what's been uh, congested, clogged, frozen. What was your high school or, I don't know, what was your teenage, let's say sports or athletic? I did track, so I don't know. Running, running? Yeah, How many running. years running? Uh, five, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's a good... See, you're a better runner with a stiff chest. Okay. You're more efficient, you waste less energy, right? You don't need chest mobility to be a great runner. You need your arms moving all over the place and your legs moving all over the place. Yeah. But you, if anything, I remember watching a video of Michael Johnson explaining, you know, fast running. You want your chest to be completely locked and your arms to be moving all over the place. And so my point of asking how long you're running is that I want to know how many years you were encouraging your chest to be stiff, <laughs> right? And I'm not saying you can't run. I'm just saying we have to then participate in keeping your chest mobile, right? There should have been an effort and a conversation, you understand, to understand what the track and field encourages your spine to do and then be adjusted, stretch, to maintain some balance and limberness in your spine. W without that, that's what this gets beat up. The lower back gets beat up because this is too stiff. Okay. But it's very significant misalignment right here. I mean, I'm, Nobody, nobody, I, I can only assume nobody's found this one either. Huh. Okay. No. I can feel it. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's just, it's not. My right shoulder's look all at, messed up. It's a, ter it's terrible. I'm sorry you're living with this. <laughs>
curious exactly the story of understanding how long it's been here. How long have you yeah, lived with it? I don't know, really. We don't feel the parts of our spine that are frozen. So it's going to make sense that you don't know because, Ed, it's been locked for long enough that I didn't even know it existed until you started pushing on it. And, but because it doesn't age, there's not necessarily any symptoms for anybody to medically go, okay, let's go investigate it. It doesn't, it's actually younger than you are. And, um, but the very fact that it's younger than you are, that's the problem. <laughs> it's not aging. And that's a problem. We need to get it to age a little bit more. Okay. Like if I didn't know better, something collided with you in here. Hmm. Like you fell and it... Something, I don't, yeah, I couldn't think of anything. Something hit this, and then you tilted left to avoid. Okay. But this got jammed. Could have been a right rotation. You know, something something where these joints got jammed. You got twisted. Something twisted you to the your torso turned to the right. Your hips went left, and this got jammed. And then your body said, "Ow!" And then you healed. Tilted left. You understand in avoidance of it, and then that became your new normal. And now because things aren't centered, there's tightness and like you're saying, your whole body kind of just, like I said earlier, everything just feels off. Yes. Right? Because, well, the whole posture is off and we, in order to change anything, we have to first make you supple. You can't reposition hard clay or, you know, hard metal. You have to make everything supple so that it can be realigned. You're not going to see me spend as much time over here because you're so imbalanced that I don't want to make the left side looser because the left side will get looser faster than the right side will get looser. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we'll actually further imbalance you. How scary is that, right? If we, if we evenly massage you, we can actually further imbalance you because the loose side gets looser faster than the stiffer side. And so now the contrast between the left and right is actually growing. Now, I'm not saying ignore the left, but... We're going to do like two rounds on the right <laughs> and one round on the left and edge you up. It's not, you didn't bat, correct. <laughs> it's not an even, and this is where people can, if you just do massage sometimes, it's like, well, if I loosen you up and then we go sit, I actually can, I've just enabled you to make your posture worse, right? We want to use that loosening to then aim you into a better position, not sit and round forward and then, does that make sense? You want to try to say, yeah. you make somebody's posture worse, even though you're seeking help. We want to use, and that's it. so when you're getting worked on it at a deep level, you want to use the time afterwards to aim your spine back to a better position. And there's just not as much to play with over here. Uh huh. The right side has all the goodies. It feels like a young back over here. I mean, it's just like night and day. But yeah, I mean, uh, oh, you feel it all is congested, clogged, whatever you want to call it. You know, tell people to leave your lower back alone. That, that L5, it's good that you have that picture because it's a way to, you know, help people that work on you to know to leave it alone, right? Part of you, we have one disc that needs to, like nobody elbows hard down here, ever. <laughs> Rest of your life. It's like a wound. Let's not poke the wound. But let's, you know, beat up the parts that are not injured. And that's going to give you a long life, long, happy life. And you're just not, we're going to learn to not chew on that tooth, essentially. We have plenty of other teeth to chew on. Old injury, 
tightness congestion effects. <laughs> right? Everybody's concerned with the effects, but the cause is right here. This is the precipitating injury. If you had Dr. Bo, my father is your father, he wouldn't let this grow. <laughs> now, it wouldn't have been fun to have Bo as your father because it would have been, it, to keep this moving didn't feel good. It felt good to lay in the fetal position on the couch and heal stiff, right? I didn't have very good no teasing. <laughs> when I got injured, when I fell off my bicycle, my dad adjusted me and I wasn't allowed to heal in avoidance and I wasn't allowed to heal stiff. Chiro means hand. Chiropractor means hand practitioner. It's supposed to be mechanical, supposed to be hands-on work. Saying left side's perfect. There's definitely some some congestion over here, but it's like half or a third the size of the right. I can feel that mm -hmm. you're hitting the spots there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt, it just like, mm -hmm. it's, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, Get out of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we're stretching in a minute, you're going to feel lopsided <laughs> on the stretching. It's because your back is lopsided. <laughs> and as your back becomes more balanced, you understand, it'll feel level. But you'll feel crooked on it when you're not. Well, you are, but it's because your back isn't level. You are on it straight, but because the right side is higher, you'll feel like you're not on it straight. Um, that's kind of one of the first things you'll see as you stretch. That'll go away, that feeling of being lopsided. But that's a significant injury here. This is what's then, this is what's tormenting his lower back is this being all congested and clogged up here. Oh yeah, that was nice. Nice, breathe. Yes, wow, beautiful. We're getting them all right here. A little bit there. Yeah, I don't think these joints have moved in a while. <laughs> I don't think any of these have been part of your team. Here we go. 
It's okay. I got you. Easy, easy. Breathe. I got you. Relax. I got you. I promise I won't drop you. Breathe. Exhale. Good. There you go. Relax. Relax. Exhale. Good. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Arms down for me. You okay? Yeah. All right. Arms down for me. Breathe in for me. Breathe in. Let's go. Exhale. Breathe in for me. Exhale. Good. Okay. Yeah. The idea, that's, that we're, that's what we're dealing with in there. Yeah. That's, now the, the injured disc is way down there, right? The problems are up here. Okay. This whole right side, and I was trying to say even in the skin, you know, mm -hmm. your skin, your skin's all clear on this side. Mm -hmm. It's like one guy, then you get a whole, it's not a coincidence that this is all, mm -hmm. this is where the biggest congestion is on your back, and this is higher if I took another shot, like more, you'd see this, the one side's like <laughs> elevated mm -hmm. more. I got you. Press back with your elbow into my elbow. Press back here. So you're gonna sort of you're gonna press backwards into my elbow. It's okay. There you go. There you go. There we go. All right, I got you. Good. Yeah, we go. Breathe, breathe. Good. Okay. Be happy to just uh, put your hand around your thigh. Just relax there for a second. So you check your ears. Okay. Mm -hmm. Use mirror. Ear. You're checking. Okay. All right. Go ahead and tilt your head to the left. Oh. Go ahead and tilt left. Good. Okay. All right, go ahead and tilt right. Okay, nothing. Just that one on the side, I think. Go ahead and tilt. A little bit. You're a good sport. <laughs> Lean back for me. Check my toes. <laughs> I tell my wife, I, I always go for chief complaints. Do you understand? I want to spend 90% of our time yeah. on what he put on that. And that's why the first thing I looked on your paperwork was neck pain. I'm like, uh oh, I got a picture of his lower back. I'm like, where's his, where's his neck? I'm like, now if he told me on your chief complaint, toe pain, that I'm spending my whole visit on your toe. <laughs> Well, your lower back, but yeah, there's a lot of problems here. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Tackling. All right. Well. There we go. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Yeah, I've been. I've been watching your face. How right. you been using it? No. Does it? How do you feel generally when you get? Does your back, your neck go warm or tingly after you get yeah. off? Yeah. Yeah. How much time are you? Back, but how much time are you able to lay on it? How long? Have you I can been? do twenty minutes. Yeah. Okay. And how many times have you done twenty minutes? I did it for a month straight months every straight. day. Okay. So a couple of things. I mean, obviously, it's meant to be used in conjunction with care. The purpose right. of that is so that you can do it effectively. What happens is if your neck is as tight as I felt earlier. The effectiveness of the Denerol is limited by your neck's flexibility to go over the device, right? right? So I would hope that as you continue to use it now, it'll be more effective and it actually can help restore that curve more than what you've been using it for. Um, we've, you know, I want to check you again on the neck adjustment. We'll try to adjust that right side, but there's a lot of fluid on that right side. I would actually do a little bit of right rotation. Okay. So while you're on it, about 10, 15 degrees to the right, and then a little bit lower, and you push, and you turn, and you kind of work that right side of your neck um, to get some extra pressure on the right. I would do that for about one month. I wouldn't do more than a month unless somebody's reevaluating and checking, because it will level out. But with how significant the right misalignment is, I would have you over to the right for about one month, 20 minutes, you know, and then we talk. 20, so he, 20, 20 minute session. He's got it then in a good... It looks good, yeah. I would maybe have a job. little bit lower, just enough that you're... The, the biggest thing I'm seeing is that your head really isn't sinking in mm -hmm. as deep as it should for it to be very effective. Okay. And that has to do with table work. It's prep. That's why I'm just, you know, I can't mass sell. Uh, otherwise, I would close my office and just sell dental rolls, right? But the, the effectiveness of the tool is limited based on how, you know, 
well your upper neck. Your total is what's, de what's deceiving with your neck is that your total range of motion is actually fine. But I suspect it's happening too much in that lower neck where the disc is injured, and it's not happening in your upper neck. So when you're laying on the dental roll, the probability that you're only bending where you're loose is high. Mm -hmm. And so we gotta be a little careful. This is where chiropractic, there are some chiropractors that will actually image you when you're on the dental roll. You understand to see okay. how your neck is doing. I don't have that capability, but there are other chiropractic biophysics guys that would actually lay you on the dental roll and see how it looks when you're, you understand they'll x-ray you on the dental roll. Cool. Um, I suspect now it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, but before, if your neck was stiff, it might be bending too much in the lower neck, and, yeah. not, and then you end up maybe aggravating the lower neck. You know, that's, that's, that's why you need to be adjusted so that the tool can be used the way it's supposed to. So it's, it's tough. We call them cervicogenic. So there's, on the right side of your neck, there's a large amount of inflammation. The first phase of care is to clean out that tissue so that the nerves are residing in. Now the reason why all that tension and lactic acid builds up is because of the alignment, the mobility. Mm -hmm. So just gua shawing it, cupping it, same category, is temporary in its effectiveness. We need to actually get the curve back in your neck. You know, and in order for the curve to quickly come back to your neck, your neck has to be supple. A little bit, you can even let it slide down a little bit more than where it was. And you let me press, get your head to really yeah. out. So maybe you're a little high, okay, I would say. Yeah. You know, so, which is okay because we, we know there's that C5 disc injury, so we want to keep it as high as we can, but your head still goes over it. But I don't want to loosen the disc injury anymore, so it's, we are threading a needle here a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that disc will rehydrate and stop bulging the more we rehabilitate. We call this extension traction is what it's called, or mirror image stretching, so we're actually decompressing the front part, which then shifts the disc away from the spinal cord in the posterior compartment. Okay. So yeah, 20 minutes. You don't lift your head up off it. Use one hand to lift, grab, lay your head back down. You know, that's the main thing is when you get off, don't just, you know, use your muscles to get you off. Is that MRI after you did the month sessions or? Yes. That MRI was after a month of doing the dental roll? Yes. Wow, so it was worse than... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'll if you twenty. If you do a month of that. It's gonna, you know. So, your actually so that 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 anterior that retrosthesis that I'm saying would have been worse. You're saying you've actually stretched some of that back into place by okay. mastering this. So, this is really more for kids. <laughs> oh no, I got you, but okay. okay. Here we go. Now you're on big boy. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is higher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's this is what you should be mastering. It's okay. okay. But. Typically, I would do at least three months. You know, it's good. To, it's fine to spend a few months on the smaller guy. Acclimate. Would anything get worse down your leg while you were on the dental roll? No. Would it feel better? If, if you had symptoms, would they feel better after you got off the dental roll? Describe kind of the journey. Mm, maybe a little bit. I don't know. So you noticed kind of not much difference. Right. So I'd be, like I said, I part of me was, at least for the lumbar, you need to be on the bigger one, So first of all. Okay. Um, and how, see, the worry that I have primarily with people just doing dental rolls without being adjusted is that you're, you're highly likely to just bend where you're loose, which can further imbalance your spine. And I'm wondering how much of that might be going on. I mean, you're definitely decompressing the front, but what happens is if you bend too much at the bottom, you end up hypermobilizing what's already loose. Your chest is definitely stiff. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a concern that I would have. I, would, I usually spend three to five visits beat people up before I even throw them on dental rolls. You know, it's, it's a, you know, so I would, I would recommend, it, you can go higher on this. This would be the lowest position you'd be on it. Okay. You can go below your shoulder blades a little higher, but the whole chest area can be involved a little bit too. Um, yeah, no, it looks good. I, you can do the knee side to side. I, did, with I was doing that, yeah. yeah when I first good. did, I couldn't go anywhere. I was like, oh. Okay, so you've progressed yeah. a little deeper with the. Yeah. Show me. Right, I know it's on the bigger one, but show me, yeah. Beautiful. Try to put the arms up to the side. Eventually, you have to bring the arm up on the right. Bring the arm up, like almost there. Yeah. And eventually, you have the arms over your head, too. You can work all these angles. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and I've been using the foam roller with the arms up. Too. Good. Yeah, you're you're ready. You're ready. I think. Okay. Arms up. 
There you go. Yeah. Up there where that shoulder knots are. And yeah. So I want all of that to be, you need to re-recruit and you know, loosen all of the vertebrae. So knees to the right would be, should be worse. Go knees right, and then you're gonna compress that. Yeah, right there, yeah, compress that right side. Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> and this should be easier. Yeah, that should be easier. So I'd almost want you going two times to the right for every one left. Okay. Right, you really wanna, you almost don't go, I almost would fast from going left, I would just go right for like a month. So people ask me all the time, you know, people do circles with their neck, you end up just grinding your lower neck more. Most people's lower necks are very loose, the upper necks are tight. Yeah. So if you do a roll with your, in a circle with your neck, you're just pivoting primarily on your lower neck, further stressing what's already injured. So do I advise people to do neck rolls, you know, circles with their neck? No. I want people to master the denerals, you're saying master getting adjusted, and live a long life. Any physical activity is just gonna take whatever's working and make it work, right? And so how can I isolate the parts that need to be encouraged to be loosened and not further stress the parts that are already stressed? And that's, I don't know how I can do that just actively. It has to be done kind of passively with either somebody like me working on your back or a stretch harnessed and focused into certain areas. Yeah. Oh, man, have your head, I got your head. There it is, a little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. Crunchy. Yeah, you're ready for dental now. <laughs> you're saying it's, it's, it's just got to get all that. It's uh, the principle in an engine is that water doesn't compress, right? If water gets in your engine, it'll blow your engine up because water can't be compressed. So the synovial joint capsule is filled with water. So when you, it has to be like excavated and evicted from the joint capsule by squeezing it out. Mm -hmm. That's part of what the adjustment does. You understand? But they both work hand in hand. You got to. Compress the joint as much as it can be compressed, and then you have to like squeeze it out, and you have to adjust and then squeeze, you understand, know mm -hmm. to get the joints to overlap so we actually can stretch deep enough to get to the ligaments. Okay. And without the adjustment, we're not going to get deep enough to that ligament, so you're not going to. That's why I have to have a chiropractor. When like you're, when you're sitting back. in the airport and all that, I want you to put something behind that middle back. Don't be sitting unsupported. Put something behind the middle back? Anything, a water bottle. Just okay. Right contacting here Sorry. okay right in that middle back is I, I want pressure and if you can get it more on the right be even better but okay just up here we need to change the folding point so imagine a piece of paper that you keep folding back and forth in the same crease right it starts to tear yeah. we're trying to create a new fold where it isn't injured and you're primarily folding right at that like if we took a motion picture of your lumbar we would see that most of the mechanical bending is happening right on that L5 disc on that last disc and then the nerves that come out of there are agitated, which then goes to your leg, and that's why your legs feel shaky. You have a wound. Mm -hmm. Think of that lower back disc injury as a wound, and so this butterfly stitches and, and it mobilizes it, right? And that should, especially when you're standing or moving around, you don't want to be using this when you're sitting, because then it constipates you and it stiffens you all up. But when you're moving around, because you got this all stiff, and now this is forced to become the loosest, right? When you sit, you need to actually have something behind your back. Okay. Like your, you could even use your lumbar dental at work. You could, you know, use this in a chair. You know, putting that, that makes sense, behind your back, higher up here, and you lean back. But you shouldn't be allowed to just round. Right. Because that's then going to throw all the work down to your lower back. And the leg shaking, that's all, you have a significant disc injury. And I'm sorry that no one said that that's significant because it's extremely significant. And, you know, that's a, that's a tough story, to, you know, that they're selling you that, no, you're fine, you're not. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. All right.